Hey everybody and welcome to this month's tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hideman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And this month, um, it's not really a, a tip or a trick per se, but more of a how-to video as far as setting up a standard parts model. So what are standard parts and, and why would I want to do this? Um, a lot of folks out there have for things like clip angles or shear tabs, they have a standard part mark that their company uses or that their fabricator that they're working for uses. So it's not going to get or they would prefer it not to have a, uh, you know, A1, A2, A3 type of mark, which Tecla might do by default. But instead, they have a catalog number for this item, and regardless of the job, um, regardless of the situation, they always wanted to take that standard mark because they have a stack of these sitting uh, in a pile that they're just going to pull off a certain number of those and, and weld them to the beams that, or the columns or whatever that they're doing. Um, so rather than have those automatically be marked in a random pattern, they want to have a specific mark for these things. So the way that you want to do that is you first want to build a catalog model, a standard part model. And what it might look like is something like this. I have just a, a series of clips modeled in, and these could be tabs, um, anything that you're, you, know, you use on a regular basis. And then in these, you want to have a certain kind of setup. Number one, they have to look exactly like they're going to look in the, the real project, right? So while I don't have a beam, I don't have a column here, I did use the clip angle component to create these, and then I just sort of deleted all the stuff that I didn't need, um, mainly for clarity, okay? So mainly for the clarity of this video, I just wanted to show these individual parts. But you have to make sure that they match exactly down to the, the whole location, the length, all of that stuff, the physical part has to match exactly what you're gonna create in your real production model. After that, you wanna make sure that you set these up with the part numbering prefix will be what the, the you know, desired standard part mark would be. So, you know, different companies have different methods for calling these out. For simplicity's sake, what I did was I went through and called these out as two row, three row, four row, and five row. So these could be anything, right? But I just, you wanna make sure that that mark, whatever it going to be, is gonna be in the part prefix of that object, okay? So now let me go ahead and jump into an actual model that's using these clips in connections, and then we'll show you what that um, what the process looks like for setting up that model and, and getting it to use this as a catalog for piece marks. Okay, so now I'm in my production model, and I apologize for the simplicity of this model, but I'm just trying to make a point here. Um, and I'm, I'm in a model that, as you can see, has not been numbered yet. And I did, in my display options, turn on the piece marking so that we can see what those are um, at any given moment. So before I number, because if I number right now, remember, this is just going to take on the letter prefix. Um, let me go ahead and change my selection here just so we can see this. Um, so normal Tecla numbering, it's going to start at A1 and then go through A2, A3, A4, A5, right? So without any changes, that's what I would get. Um, but what you want to do is first tell this model which model is the, the, the standard part model, which model is my catalog model. And you can do that through your advanced options. So if I go to the file menu and choose settings and advanced options, you want to select the numbering section here on the left. And then in the numbering section, you can scroll down to you see this XS standard part model. This can also be set up using a user INI file, um, which if you've seen my video on the directory browser, uh, that's the quickest way to get to your uh, user any file. But here I'm just setting it up in this project. So XS standard part model, and then you want to enter the path to where your standard part model is being stored. Mine is in the Tecla Structures Models directory. I have a subfolder called 2020. And then the, the file or the project name, uh, I called it standard parts. So you just give the folder path and then say apply. And then the other thing you want to do is actually tell Tecla to use that model. So first you're pointing to it. But now if you go to your numbering settings, what I want to do, um, if I'm going to set up an initial numbering here, 
is to check the box for check for standard parts. So that is going to reference that advanced option. It's going to go and look at that model during the numbering process. And if it finds a matching physical part, it's going to use that setup uh, that we were just talking about. So I'll say apply and OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and let's do a number modified. And let me zoom in here. You can see that that's being called in as a three row. That's being called in as a five row. So that did work immediately two row three row okay um, so that's that's all it is you set up a, a model with just a field of pieces in the part prefix you teach it what you want it to be and then in your production models you set up the file path and make sure you change that option in the numbering settings it's important to note you do not run a numbering in that catalog model you notice I did not do that I simply change the prefix save the model and exit so you do not actually run numbering in that model in that uh, that standard parts model or in that catalog model okay so just a quick little tip and trick a uh, little how-to hope that helps some of you folks out there super easy to set up um, and again if you set it up in your user any file that just becomes your standard and you don't have to keep setting that uh, that advanced option from project to project so if you have any questions or any thoughts go ahead and leave them in the comments below um, as always, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.